Good day everyone and welcome to another video brought to you by RootTube. In today's video I'm going to cover Dijkstra's algorithm and the shortest path which is in the year 12 further maths module networks. In terms of a learning objective for this video um, there's just the one which is just to find the length and the root of the shortest path between two vertices using Dijkstra's algorithm. All right let's have a look at our example here so Dijkstra's algorithm. So use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the length and root of the shortest path between vertices P and Z. Okay, so it's really important to identify where we're going from and where we're going to. Okay, so P and Z. So we've got our starting point as P and our finishing point or our finishing vertex at Z. Okay, so as we know by now, we can actually calculate the shortest path from a specific vertex to another vertex, um, we can find it by eye. Okay, so we can just sort of a bit of trial and error and sort of work our way through the graph. But when we're using Dijkstra's algorithm, um, we're going to see that it's a really, um, it's a specific process that we follow. Um, so it's not really a trial and error. Okay, it's a real process that um, sort of once you have a bit of practice at, it becomes um, a lot easier than the first time. Okay, so the first thing what you need to do is you need to um, sort of create a table. Okay, now you will see I've created one on the right just to save us a little bit of time. Um, so you won't sort of know how many rows, so you'll just sort of keep going until you've um, reached your destination. Okay, so what we need to do is when we're creating our table, when we're constructing our table, the starting vertex should be the first row vertex. Okay, so because we're going from P to Z, in our first row, it's going to be P. Okay, and then what we do with the other vertices is they should be listed as the column vertices in any order. Okay, now just for argument's sake, we're just going to write them in alphabetical order. Okay, it doesn't matter which order you do write them in. So we're going to go from P, Q, R, S, T, and we're finishing off at Z. So once we're there, now what we need to do is we need to fill in the table. Okay, now we're going to work with the first row. So what we're going to do in that first box is we are going to identify how long it takes or the length from P to Q. Okay, so from P to Q it's going to be 4. So we're going to record that as a four. And then the next box over to the right, so we're staying, remaining in the same row, P to R, P to R is five. And then you'll notice, well, P only goes to two vertices, so P doesn't actually go to S directly and needs to go through R. So what we do is we're just going to put a cross. If it can't get directly to each vertex from that specific vertex, we're just going to put a cross. Okay, and then P can't get to, to T, or it can, but it needs to go through either Q or R. So we're going to put a cross again. And then P to Z, well, clearly we can't do that because that would be the final answer. Okay, then what we do from there is what we need to do, we need to identify the smallest, or the lowest value in each row, which we've only got one row. Okay, so we need to identify the smallest value in the row and we need to put a little box around it. And then what we do with that boxed number is we actually bring it down to the next row. Okay, and we keep it boxed. Okay, so we're going to just put a little box around that four again. Now, there's a couple of things to do from here. And one of them, if you forget, sort of stuffs up your whole table. Okay, so there's two things. And the one thing I really like to do is because we've carried the four down from the first row to the second row, what you need to do is we need to add four to every number that's going to go into the next row because we carried down the four from the first row to the second row but then you might say well how do i know what the vertex of the second row is going to be well because we put the box around the value in column q then that means that our next row becomes q okay so now we do the same thing all over again but this time starting from q so now we're going to say from Q to R, or Q to R, and I'll just circle it on the actual graph, 
has a length of four, but don't forget to add your four to every vertex, which then becomes eight. But this, because we've already got a smaller value than eight in our row R, so we would normally write eight there, but because the five is already in that row, in that column, sorry, we don't write eight, we just take down the five. Okay, so that's a really important thing that a fair few students get a little bit tripped up and a little bit confused on, okay? So just because the answer was eight or the value was eight, if you've got a value in that column already, that's smaller than the value you're putting in, you take down that smaller value. Because remember, we're trying to find the shortest path. So you want to deal with smaller numbers as possible. And then from Q to S, Q to S, well, Q can't get to S. So therefore, once again, we're just going to put across. And then from Q to T, well, Q to T can get there. And it's got a length of five. And we're going to add our value of four to then give us nine. Okay, and because there was no smaller value than nine in column T, we then just write the nine. And then Q to Z can't do, so I'm just going to put across. Just get rid of a couple of these things. Now, once again, we do the same thing all over again. So we now need to put a box around the smallest value. So the smallest value other than the numbers that have already been boxed is the five. So now we do the same thing with the five and the four. And we take the four down and we take the five down and we put boxes around them. So they're like locked in, okay? Those box numbers, they're not gonna change. And now once again, because we took the five down from the second row to the third row, we're now gonna add five to every value. And then now because we took down the five that was in column R, now that becomes row R. And now we repeat the process. Now you might say, well, how do we know when we're gonna stop? Okay, you stop when the destination vertex, that column has a box around that value. Okay, so essentially our destination vertex is Z. So until we have a box in the column of Z, we need to keep going. And we can clearly see we've only got boxes in the column of Q and R. So that's how we know we need to keep going. So we need to do the same thing all over again now with R. So from R to S. R to S, can we get there? Yes. It's got a weight of six. But then we need to add the five to give us 11. And then now we go to the next one. R to T, can we do R to T? Yes. It has a weighting of five. So therefore five plus your five gives me 10. But remember, because we already have a value in that column T that's smaller than 10, we're gonna take down the lower value, which is nine. Okay, so that's really important. And then from R to Z, can we get there? No, there's no smaller value so I'm just going to maintain a cross. And then once again, same thing again. What's smaller out of 9 and 11? Clearly 9. So we're going to put a box around 9. And then we do the same thing again. We're going to take down the 4, take down the 5, and take down the 9. So we've got 4, 5, and 9. And now once again, because we took down the 9, we're then going to have plus 9. And because we took down the nine, we boxed the nine in column T, that becomes our next row. So then now we start again, and I'll just get rid of these. So now we've got from T to S. Okay, from T to S has a weight of three, and then we add our nine to give us 12. But remember, we already have a smaller value than 12 in that column. So therefore that 12 is going to change to an 11. And then from T to Z, T to Z, we have a weight of three. 
and we add the 9 to give us 12. Now because there's only x's in that column, 12 is, is the smallest value, so we just take that. Okay, and now once again, what's smaller out of 11 and 12? Well, clearly 11. So now we know we need to keep going because the box is not around the value in the column of Z, which is your destination vertex. Okay, and now we carry down all of those values again. So now we're going to carry down these four values. We've then got 4, 5, 11, and 9. And because we put the box around the value that was in column S, now that becomes row S, and we took down an 11, so that means that it becomes plus 11. And now, this must be the final step, because there's only one column that's unboxed, or got a value that's not boxed. So now, we'll just get rid of these circles on the graph. So now from S to Z has a weight of 7, and then we're going to add the 11 to give us 18. But we can clearly see that the 12 is smaller than 18, so we're going to stick with the 12. Okay, and now we take, what we can do, we can just take it down. And represent that as 12. Okay, so now we can see we've boxed in the column Z, which is our destination vertex. So that means that we can now stop and proceed to our next step. So now we're ready to identify the shortest path. So what we need to do is we need to start from the number in the square in the destination vertex column. Okay, so we're going to start from this box here, this 12 box here. Okay, and then what we're going to do there is we're going to draw a line up the column from that value until you reach the highest row with that same value. Okay, it doesn't need to be boxed, okay, or in, or in a square. Okay, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start from that 12 and draw a, a vertical line up until we get to the highest 12, which is that value there, and then we're going to stop. Then what we're going to do, we're going to then identify which row we are in currently. And at this value here, we are in, col uh, sorry, in row T. So that means from that line, we're then going to move to column T. So I'll say that again. Because we were in row T, we're then going to draw a horizontal line until we get to column T, which is just one space over to the left. And then we're going to restart and we're going to do the same thing again. So now we're going to start on that nine and we're going to go up until we get to the highest value of nine, whether it's in a box or a square or not. So we're going to go up two places until we get to that nine. And then we're going to say, well, we're in row Q. So therefore we're going to draw a horizontal line until we get to column Q, which is right at the beginning. And then what we're going to do is once again go up and we're back to the start, which therefore we can just draw that horizontal line just to say that we started from P. So it's really important that you can actually identify the shortest path once you've done this part. Okay, because once you've done this part, it looks quite confusing. There's sort of numbers everywhere. There's lines everywhere. But it's really important to identify and to understand that the horizontal lines show the root of the shortest path. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight with this yellow pen and I'm going to highlight just the horizontal lines because they are the ones that show the actual shortest path. So we're going to start from P and we're going to go until Q. And then from Q, remember I'm only coloring in, only highlighting the, the horizontal lines. Then from Q, we're going all the way until T. And then once again, only the horizontal lines. From T, we're then going to Z. Okay, so therefore we can say we've gone from P to Q to T to Z. Okay, so that's the actual route that is the shortest path. And now our job, which we've already got the answer, but what we're going to do on the graph, I'm actually going to draw it. We're actually going to work out the length. Okay, so we're going to start at P. 
P to Q is 4. Then from Q to T is 4 plus 5, which is 9. And then plus 3 is 12. Okay, so what we can then say is that so we can then conclude that the shortest path between vertices P and Z has a length of 12 with the root P, Q, T, and Z. So you can clearly see there's multiple steps. The first thing you need to do is work your way through the table, then draw those horizontal and vertical lines, and then once you've done that, then identify the shortest path by just um, identifying those horizontal lines. Okay, so like I said, there's multiple steps. Work through it slowly. This bit here that I'll just highlight in green often gets forgotten about. Um, this bit here, we need to add the values each time. So it's really important. You don't need to write them next to on the left hand side. You can write them on the right or you can just um, maybe don't try and remember them because it can get quite confusing. But just write them down somewhere as you proceed through each row. OK, so like you see, there's a couple of different processes. But once you have a bit of practice, it should become a little bit easier for you all. Thanks for watching and I appreciate all of your support. A special shout out to Chantal who was one of my first subscribers. I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something about Dijkstra's algorithm and the shortest path problem. Please feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel as I am currently in the process of uploading some more cool videos to help math students through their school journey.